good day. What extraordinary circumstances we find ourselves in. I hope you're all uh, safe and well locked up at home. Uh, we are well here, we have a well stocked cellar and uh, no signs of any coughs or chills so far. Uh, but it has been somewhat tedious. Uh, as you can see, my family and myself have no magic lantern here with us. They are all locked up in another property the other side of town with my colleague Nicole. Um, very sad state of affairs. But this morning I hit upon a good idea. When the delivery boy came, I gave him a shilling and the other end a very long piece of piping and sent him on the way to uh, Nicole's house. Hopefully he should be arriving there just about now and we can put on a little magic lantern show for you with the aid of modern technology. Hello? Are you there? Are you there yet? We'd like to do a magic lantern show. Two mystery doors. Which shall I take? Welcome. Take your seat. For many hundreds of years, magic lanternists would travel from town to town. They would gather people together in darkened rooms, and onto the walls they would project fantastical and astonishing images of grand adventures in far-off lands. Come with us now as we go back, back into time. But not that far. There is a lockdown going on. We go back about six weeks. Here we see this land as it once was in times gone by. We see people gathering together in great crowds to dance and celebrate and enjoy one another's company. They gathered in restaurants, in cafes and in smoke-filled bars. That was until some of the people began to feel slightly poorly. It seemed like nothing at first, a bit of a cold. They just needed a little bit of a lie down. <coughs> I, I just, <coughs> honestly, honestly, it's, it's nothing. I, 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 it's just a little bit of a cold. It's just, just fine. It's, it's not that coronavirus thing that happens to the people in the other countries. <coughs> <coughs> <laughs> Go and fetch me some loo rolls, boy. But Grandfather, I don't want to leave you. They say there are germs out there. Lavatory paper. <coughs> <coughs> of course, when our young friend arrives at the shops, there are long queues and no lavatory paper left at all. But he does get a fine selection of green cabbage leaves. Of course! You have invented a new environmentally friendly green lavatory paper. Realising he has solved the nation's problems, our young entrepreneur sets up a business supplying green lavatory paper to chemists and physicians up and down the land. Well done, young man. That's how you kickstart an economy. Ah, oh, but uh, aren't you forgetting something, young man? There was, uh, there was somebody you left at home. But when he gets home... His grandfather is no longer there. Where has he gone? Oh. Oh dear, I'm, I'm so sorry. Young man, I'm sorry for your loss. The young man finds himself wandering, lost and alone without his grandfather. If only he'd thought of other people rather than hastening to stockpile cabbage leaves, which had now only started to go off and were no use as lavatory paper whatsoever. And he feeds them to some nearby pigs. What a waste, young man. The young boy has learnt his lesson. He decides to put away his money, his field so meaningless after all, and he decides he will go into isolation the rest of the pandemic, just like a good little angel would do. 
Of course, when he did go out, which we all have to now and again, of course, for essential reasons only, he uh, observed social distancing. You can see him uh, social distancing from his own mother here. Good two metres apart there. Good work, young man. And definitely not going into that stately home. Definitely not. Indeed, here we can see some more people social distancing on a, on a hillside. Um, physical exercise only. No sitting down and having a picnic. And uh, here we see some people social distancing on a beach. Sure, they must be fishermen or something like that. Central journeys only. But I'm sure some of you are wondering what became of our once busy cities. Now people can no longer be seen close together like this, or using the trams or buses. What, what became of the empty streets? Well, you'll be pleased to know that the uh, animals and birds who once shied away from human behaviour and kept away from our streets now manage to claim them back as their own. After a time, even some stranger and more unusual creatures started to appear back on our streets. I can hardly wait until we see live monkeys in our trees once again. Indeed, what a strange and fantastical place this world will be when we finally emerge from our homes. Begin once again to travel and see our friends in the far off lands and once again exchange germs begin the whole thing over again. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our jolly little tale. Um, remember, the moral of the story is social distancing. You must keep at least this far away from other people. No, the moral of the story is this. Do remember to look after each other and remember to let other people look after you as well. Thank you very much to our lanternist, Nicole Mollett. My name is Frog Morris, and a special thanks to Luke Mollett for his assistance with this production.